how's everyone doing? Uh, my name's Antonio. I'm with the Nocturnal. What's up, um, Antonio? How are you? Uh, I'm good. Thank you. Um, so I guess I'll just go down the line. I just have a general question for all of you. What attracted you to the project at first? Uh, well, for me, I, you know, I read the script. Obviously, you know, hearing about this Blumhouse collaboration was it was big. It was big news for me. Um, I love the fact that it was such a modern take on vampires and it was teenagers fighting vampires. There had there was an essence about it that felt very classic and kind of like a homage to kind of like films in the 80s. Um, I thought that the, you know, the social issues that were being touched on were so important because, you know, film is a powerful medium and, and it, it, it's something that should that should be that should it's our world, you know, so it's reflecting our world and the current state of our world. And, and I I was ready to have fun and myself and and kick some vampire butt. Nice. Um, I'll go with the uh, two words: uh, home and vampires. Um, yeah. The fact that you know they were able to bring an all-star cast down to New Orleans, and we were able to get to work in our backyard, like with some of our really good friends, make a bunch of really great friends through the process of creating this film, and then. Um, you know, these weren't your typically styled vampires. I think they were a lot more aggressive. They were a lot crazier looking. Um, it made it made working during those intense scenes, during those action scenes, being scared, it made all of that really easy. So that and getting a chance to kick it and, and, and pursue your pursue your dreams in your backyard, like, can't ask for it. Yeah, I'll definitely echo Mason on that one. I mean, ultimately, it boils down to uh, trust and creative capacity. Um, you know, you trust it to... Uh, Bands behind it, Bloom House and Amazon, right? Um, two of the biggest in our respective industries. Um, also being able to shoot at home in our own backyard, um, that made it much more convenient for myself and Mason. Um, and uh, just a sci-fi and horror genre within itself. And I think that anybody wants to be a part of a world where there are vampires involved. Wow, all right. So both uh, Craig and Mason, you guys are from uh, New Orleans? I'm from New Orleans, he's from Baton Rouge. Oh, okay. Got you. Got you. Um, <laughs> nice. Nice. Um, so this question is for uh, Fabrizio. Um, so you play the, um, you know, you play the gay best friend um, and you did a really good job with uh, the comic relief and uh, bringing out a little bit of like the lighter side in the horror. Did you have a difficult time bringing that out on such a serious, uh, with such a serious movie with a darker tone? You know, as I read the script, uh, I knew I, 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 it was an opportunity to be a comedic relief, and and I knew that it was it was actually being asked to be a comedic relief. I think every moment, no matter how hard it is, I think there's comedy in everything, really. And I right. think it's just a matter of playing the honesty in the scene, and and a lot of things that you know, going to the screening, I, I did a lot of things that I didn't even realize were funny until uh, we heard it in front of an audience and people were laughing. Uh, so it wasn't even my intention at times. It was just being true to myself and true to the character. Uh, so, no, I mean, I, I I just tried to be I just tried to be honest. And and uh, you know, when I did have the opportunity where I knew it was right in front of me to take the joke, I I, I went for it. Nice. Um, and Mason, you played the um, the love interest. What was it like being uh, being a love interest in a horror movie? Um. It was interesting because I knew that like there were aspects of strength that even though I was playing a 16 year old kid would have to come from somewhere very grown up. Um, so, I mean, honestly, at the time, I was glad to be 25, 26 years old shooting it because it was easy for me to backtrack into the fun kid that's having fun, enjoying my time with the ladies and doing my thing. High school wasn't that far away from me. But um, obviously, to, to kind of step into it from a, a more mature angle and realize that there's an aspect of this cat that really wants to take care of the people close to him and uh, take care of the person he's especially interested in, Shauna. So um, it was fun combining all of those layers into, into ultimately that objective, which is, you know, Shauna. Y'all don't tell Asia I said that, though. Y'all don't. Neither one of y'all. <laughs> I didn't even hear it. What? Uh, I didn't even uh, hear it. Uh, <laughs> it's only on the internet Go yeah. to you. <laughs> um craig i wanted to ask you um did you find did you find yourself relating to your character at all um 
as much as I guess the other guys did as well? Um, relating to him in the sense that he's much more of a playboy. Um, I, I wouldn't consider myself a playboy at all. Um, I, I love monogamy. Um, but, you know, yeah, I think that there are definitely things that Shades of the Frock that are just inherently a part of me. Obviously, he's been alive for a very long time, a few centuries. Um, I've been told frequently I'm a no soul. Um, and the question is, you know, what does one do when they have um, time, a limited time? And I would assume one would read. Um, one would find themselves in, in introspective states frequently. And um, they would just uh, live a life of immediate fulfillment. So the question then that it becomes, well, what is this person's mode of fulfillment? obviously sensual pleasure um it's very human so i think that that you know that relation is not just for me but um across the bar the broad the broader spectrum uh but i think i found you know uh the similarities of the shades um gradually as uh, the months of you know isolation through quarantine had going on you, uh, there's this cynicism that kind of you know burdens you a bit and then you say okay cool you know if i've been alone for this long or alive for this long obviously i'd be a cynic of anything <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. So clearly all of you are very like you guys had a pretty good experience on set. You guys seemed like you guys really enjoyed doing a horror movie. So I guess my last question for each of you is, do you see yourself doing a horror project again in the future or do you think that's it? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. If I think if the right. Yeah. If the right thing comes along, definitely. I, I, I don't I don't like to. When I see movies, I don't like to think about them as genres. As, but like if I'm doing them, I like to think about it more so as the script and the story, right? Uh, I think a genre is a good way to identify what you're working with. But ultimately, a good script is a good script. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, would be thrilled to do another horror project. Obviously, uh, we're not always in control of what comes down the pipe as far as auditions go. But I mean, right. hey. They wrote me another one. This was a great experience. This was a great mental exercise as an actor. And I mean, hell, if they want me to be scared again, can't be any scarier than like 2020. So let's get it. Right. Why not? Yeah. Bless you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, I think that's all I have for today. Uh, thank you very much. Congrats on the movie. You all did a great job. And oh, I appreciate uh, the answers. Yeah, thank you, Antonio. Have a good one. Yeah, man.